The HEDQT is the global temperature data set that's compiled by the Met Office Hadley Centre in conjunction with the Climatic Research Unit at the University of East Anglia. And this takes in more than 5,000 weather stations from around the world and combines it with temperatures of the sea surface uh, as measured from ships and from drifting buoys. And we do this in order that we can uh, understand uh, what is happening in terms of the year-to-year uh, -year variations of the global temperatures and also whether there are any long-term trends in global temperatures over the last 100 years. So how quickly has changed? We have a new version and this is because in the older version, had T3, we realised that we had sparse coverage uh, over the high latitude regions of the Earth uh, and also that there were many different ways in which sea surface temperatures have been measured over the years from taking the temperature of the water hauled up in buckets over the side of ships to measuring the engine room intakes to more latterly uh, measuring the temperatures from drifting buoys. And in the new uh, global temperature data set, HADCRU T4, we've taken a much more comprehensive analysis. We have many more data in the Arctic regions, uh, and we've also made a new analysis of the sea surface temperatures in which we've taken account of the many different ways in which sea surface temperatures have been measured to produce a much more comprehensive record. You can see what effect these changes have had on the record here. So this is the Hadcrew T4 global temperature record going from 1850 to the present day. And in red here we can see in the solid line we can see our new best estimate of the global temperatures with our uncertainties is the band around it. And if we compare with Hadcrew T3, which is our previous record, you can see uh, here this is shown in blue and you can see here that the main differences have occurred here in the middle part of the 20th century and then more recently in the more recent years. The main differences between the two occur in two places. Um, in the middle part of the 20th century here uh, and in more recent years. So if we look at the, the, the changes in the middle part of the century where you can see that had crew T4 in red is generally a bit warmer than had crew T3. This is because of our new analysis of the different ways in which the sea surface temperatures have been measured in time. And the most important issue here is related to the particular drop-off in temperatures seen at the end of the Second World War in the had crew T3 temperatures. And this was associated with the fact that following the war there were many more British ships measuring using the method of hauling in buckets over the sides of ships. And this leads to cooler temperatures because of evaporative cooling of the temperatures in the bucket. These are cooler temperatures than would be measured by uh, buoys, drifting buoys, or by the engine room intakes of ships. So in this new analysis, we've taken account of that. And that means that the temperatures globally are slightly warmer in the middle part of the 20th century. And then if we look at more recent years, what we have now been able to get are new data for the uh, Russian region and the Arctic region. Now this is a region of the Earth that's relatively poorly observed. We have relatively few weather stations. So with these new weather stations we're better able to measure what is happening at the higher latitudes of the Earth. And in fact the high latitudes in the Northern Hemisphere have been warming more rapidly than the global average. And what this has resulted in in our new had crew T4 global temperatures is as you can see the temperatures are slightly warmer than they were in had crew T3. But overall, the message uh, in the long term from both of these records remains the same. Uh, and as you can see, that there's been an overall warming of about three quarters of a degree since 1900.